everyone, and welcome to today's DataVox webinar, The New Normal of Workplace Collaboration, presented by Mersive. My name is Jessica, and I will be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this webinar through Cisco WebEx events, and the audio can be heard through your PC or by calling into the phone number listed and with the access code provided in your confirmation email or calendar invite for this event. Today's webinar is being recorded on behalf of DataVox, and participation in this event indicates your consent in to being included in that recording. All attendees will receive an email with a link to the complete recording 24 to 48 hours post-event. If you have questions for the presenters at any time during this presentation, you may submit those questions via the Q&A feature to the bottom right of your screen. This should already be turned on. Simply click Q&A and the text box will appear. Our panel will be responding to these questions throughout the presentation via text and verbally at the conclusion of the presentation. If you are in need of support or have a question not pertaining to today's topic, please utilize the chat feature and I will be happy to assist you. This feature is separate from the Q&A feature and can be turned on by clicking the chat bubble in the lower center of your screen. Now that we have reviewed the features of this webinar, we would like to start off today's presentation with a few words from our VP of Audiovisual Technology, John Layton. John, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jessica. Thanks everybody for joining us today. I'm pleased to introduce you to a long-term partner of ours, Immersive Technologies. Um, we've been using their product for a number of years, um, and our customer satisfaction uh, with the product is just outstanding. Um, it's a fantastic product, and especially so given the new circumstances which we all face as we return to the office. Uh, trying to get into a conference room and have a meeting, um, and maybe the only thing I have to touch is my own personal laptop is an ideal uh, scenario. So. Marsif certainly allows you to do that. Um, but with that, I'm going to turn it over and just give a brief introduction. So from Marsif, we've got Jack Christiana, Phil Webb, and John Chandler. Outstanding team, great support, um, and they're here to tell us what's coming and what's new with the product. So gentlemen, over to you. Thank you. Well, John, thank you for that. Uh, first of all, we appreciate everyone's time today during these uh, the COVID cloud. So we'll try to make this painless, entertaining, and informative for you guys. So I guess we'll just start off. Let me go ahead and share my screen for you guys. And I'll, we will start us off. So I think we're going to kind of, what I'd like to do is maybe take 10 or 15 minutes and, and talk about where we are and then take the rest of this presentation to talk about where we're going. For those of you who aren't familiar with Mersive, uh, this will teach you where, where, a little bit about what we are, and for those of you who aren't as familiar, maybe add some, some new insight or some features of what we're doing as well. So, what are we? Um, you know, Mersive is a 12-year company based out of Denver that specializes in wireless content and collaboration. Now, when you hear wireless content, most people think of replacing an HDMI cable with a device or something else, basically to get content from a device wirelessly to a display. We do that, but we do so much more and add more value to our customers around analytics and other things, and we'll get into that. So let's just go through this. So one thing you learn is I don't do a lot of PowerPoints, so I apologize for that up front, but one of the things that we do is we make this very easy for our end users to take what's on their local device, as John said, your device, and get it onto a screen without touching anything or getting it up on that screen and making it work. The average share time from when I open my laptop in a meeting room and getting on that display is about 9.2 seconds, uh, which is usually faster than grabbing an HDMI cable or any other device and plugging in and making it work. We are US-based. All our design and development is in Denver, Colorado. Um, I'm based here in Dallas. Phil, who you meet in a second, is based in San Antonio. And Jack is based in Houston, so we've got the area pretty well covered. Um, but back to the fact that we are more than just the replacement of an HDMI cable. You know, we've got, um, you know, we'll talk about conference, which is coming. We've got active learning that just came out. We've got centralized management. Um, so we do a lot of things to make the workflow easy. One of the things that, that we do, one of our claims to fame is we can talk to five different networks. Why is that important? Uh, for users who come in from on the guest network or from the internal network or the BYOD network, they have the ability just to stay on whatever network they're on, adhere to the to the um, security protocols within the organization, and then share on the screen at the same time. So that way they don't have to switch networks, they don't have to switch other things to make um, make it complicated. We want people to come in with whatever they're, however they're connected, come in and connect um, 
to the display and collaborate without anything else getting in the way. Um, when I first started, one of the, our claims or one of the things that was brought to my attention is our CTO basically said, we don't want anybody to know who we are. And as a salesperson, that's pretty, not a very enlightening thought. We don't want anybody to know who we are. And what he, what he was alluding to was, as soon as you walk into a room and you're getting ready to have a meeting, and you have to talk about how to start the meeting with technology or the adapter or the cable or is this display port or HDMI, the meeting has already started about talking about the technology or the barriers to get that information on the screen. Well, we don't want anybody to talk about what we're doing. People just come in, share what they're doing, and start to have a productive meeting. And this is kind of what talks about that is we can share multiple different ways from a browser, which is new. So you can open up a browser and point to our pod and instantly share, which includes Chromebooks, uh, Linux, or any other device you have that runs a browser. We can share through native, which is AirPlay or Miracast. And we can also share, share through our app, which gives you a lot of power, analytics, and all these other things, which is insightful for what you do. Uh, what are we driving towards? Better meetings. You know, we've all been through meetings where, you know, we, we joke about it in the industry where, you know, the meeting's at one, but it really won't start till 110 because that's how long it'll usually take everyone to start the meeting or get, get started. Well, we want to get rid of that because what we, as you heard me talk earlier, it takes about nine seconds to get our stuff on the screen, but also multiple people can share at the same time. So that means we don't have to pass things around or, you know, like it's my turn. Can you, you know, we call it the cable of power in some rooms where you've got to plug it in. And then if I want somebody else to share in that meeting, I've got to hand them that cable or device for them to plug in and then share. So the ecosystem that we live in, unlimited content sharing. As many people as you want, depending on the device, we come in two flavors, which is four simultaneous connections or unlimited. So you have the ability for as many people you want to share on that device, on that display as you want to. The user interface, one of our kind of, we get a lot of compliments on is our user experience or user interface. They're all similar. The user experience for us is a key component of what we do. Because if we make the interface complicated or, and it's not intuitive, we, once again, we've been a barrier to that meeting. Um, we also have the ability to share on multiple displays. So on the back of our pod, and we'll, I'll show you a picture in a second, has dual HDMI outs. So we can either mirror to those displays or treat them separately, which gives you two workspaces, which for a lot of our customers, that's a big bonus. So a lot of these rooms have dual displays, and traditionally when you shared content, on those displays, they both share the same piece of content. With us, you can make it look differently. So I might want to have my chart on the right, and let's say another chart on the left to do side-by-side -side comparisons. We now have the ability to do things like that. We have annotation. And what does that mean? Um, we now have the ability to make a phone, right, a cell phone, which has a gyro or accelerometer in it, a laser pointer. And that's a lot of fun. And it's very intuitive because I just move my phone around. I don't have to go to the screen. I don't have to stand up. I can sit at the, at the table, grab my phone, connect, and have the ability to highlight or draw someone's attention to a certain part of my presentation. Um, we're also a digital signage player. Um, so when we're not being shared or when you're not sharing content, you have the ability to get corporate information out and use that device uh, to disseminate that information across the organization. Um, and we'll just keep, you know, security. And that is one of the biggest things that we do. We talked earlier about the ability to talk to five networks. So it's, it's got two network adapters in the box. One's a Wi-Fi adapter. We connect that to the guest network or another network. Or we have an RJ45 in the back where we plug in a hardened network. And then we can add three additional VLANs to that, which most customers love. Um, but th those are secure. You know, we were born out of a project between the CIA and the University of Kentucky 12 years ago. Um, and we're in a lot of different intelligence agencies. So security is one of our most paramount things we do. Um, here's a picture of the device. Now, it's about the size of, uh, for those of you who are old enough, a VHS tape. Um, it sits behind the display in most installations. And if you look at the front, one thing that also makes us different, we've got an HDMI in. In most organizations that have tried to go wirelessly, it's either wired or wireless on that display. Well, now we have the ability with us to go wired or wireless. I mean, wired and wireless at the same time. So let me say that again, wired and wireless on the display at the same time. So if I come in or a guest comes in and they can't get their device to work and there's a problem, which inherently does happen, they can then plug into the front of our device and share on that display as well as other workers that were able to get on wirelessly. 
on the back of the pod, you see the two HDMI um, outs. Once again, they can either mirror or be separate. Two USB 3.0s on the back. Um, you could plug that into a touchscreen or a keyboard and mouse to annotate content on the display. And we'll talk about what's coming with that because what we're going to talk about in the future is you're going to be able to play a camera and a microphone in the back of this thing and connect to it wirelessly for uh, bring your own meeting, which is pretty powerful. Um, three and a half millimeter, which is not highlighted, audio out, power, we are PoE plus, 24 watts. Um, so you can cycle power that way if you want to do it that way, but you know, it, it doesn't come with a power supply. A lot of our companies are now using PoE, which we love. Um, and that's kind of a picture of the product. Um, we are, I mean, so I'm, I'm going to bore you with all this stuff, but I think it's important. We do wireless 4K. We do six uh, 1080p 30 frames a second wirelessly. So I can share all that without anything dropping, um, which is pretty impressive. So we do a lot of shootouts in our, in our space. And we go into organizations where we sit down, we open up our laptop, and when we start sharing you know, 4K movies wirelessly without it dropping a frame, it pretty much makes customers start to decide about, do I even want that cable in my room anymore? Um, let's see what else do I have on here. You know, so we talk about the wired input, the Salsa app, which is the app that gives you the ability to turn on moderator mode, which means that I can share content and make sure that no one else joins my meeting. Um, Active learning, we'll talk about that. So we just deployed Solstice Cloud. Now, Solstice Cloud is, is kind of a two-pronged product. It gives me the ability to manage my pods across my network. Um, if anybody's familiar with a company called WeWork, um, we have about 11,000 pods inside the organization, um, and they can manage them all from the cloud. Now, what does that mean? Um, as soon as I plug them in, I can add templates to them, I can change their background screens, I can do all kinds of other things to manage them without ever having to touch them. But it also give me alerts if it loses power or if somebody in the disconnects it or something. So if it doesn't, if it loses connectivity, it's gonna let me know that. Um, it also has tiered access, which means that I as the admin can go in and start changing settings and doing things. But let's say I want marketing to change digital signage. I want them to change a background screen. Well, I don't want them to have access to IP settings and security. Now we can tier the access within the cloud. But also the cloud gives us analytics. So analytics is, is becoming a key component of what we do in our ecosystem. Because I, as the facility director or as the IT director or the CFO, might want to know what my room utilization is. How many meetings are taking place in these rooms? How many people are, are meeting in these rooms? How many people are connecting? Well, within the ecosystem of the Solstice Cloud, there's a dashboard where I can get a visual representation of what's going on in my rooms, what's being used, what's not being used, what kind of device is connecting. Um, so it gives me some very good insights, such as all my other rooms are at about 40% utilization, but this one room is at 0% utilization. Something must be wrong. Is it the technology in the room that's not working? Um, is there something broken in the room? Do people not know about the room? But at most organizations, we start talking about room utilization because it is such a big cost center, they usually don't have a lot of insight. And if they do, they had to build a large system to do it. Well, thus we make it easier. And we'll talk about some of the more analytics that are coming with what we're about to announce, um, which is conference. So conference um, is what we're gonna have Phil show you in a second. I'll switch to him in just a few minutes. I know you guys are very tired of hearing me talk. I'm surprised my wife and kids haven't come in to interrupt my meeting. But conference is what I talked about earlier, the ability to plug in a USB camera in the back of this pod and then launch a meeting and connect to it wirelessly is for us pretty groundbreaking. We just came back from the last AV trade show before the COVID hit, the COVID, um, which was ISC in Amsterdam. We won two best of shows, one for this, which is conferencing, and one for active learning which is a wireless kind of um, matrix switch so I can move content around over the network without having to have a lot of infrastructure. We won't talk about that today. But now the ability to plug a camera in and a mic in the back of this pod, connect to it, and launch my meeting from my laptop. Now, I, all I'm doing when I come to the room, and we'll talk about the workflow in a second, is come in, connect to the pod, it's going to auto-launch whatever meeting I'm attached to, 
and connect to that camera and do it So what we're going to do at the end of this, or Phil's going to show you a demonstration of this, but we're going to send you guys a video of what this looks like. It's going to be really hard to show this because we're on WebEx and we're going to cascade another video conferencing solution into this call. So we're going to we'll, we'll try to make sure what it, how it does. But this is some of what our partners are telling us. You know what, what we're what we're seeing in the marketplace, like home office. What's the occupancy rate of conference rooms? So we think now with with this new change, will it be an eight-person conference room now becomes a four-person conference room because of spacing? Personal technology. Do I not want to touch stuff? Um, are we going to have you know stage workflows where people come in at, at maybe seven and leave at three, and people come in at ten and leave at five? How do we manage all this stuff? And we're always working on solutions to do that. Um, one of the things that we do too, you know, most of the companies in our space are hardware boxes. You know, it's chip based, it's firmware based. Um, right, we are a box, right? You saw a picture of it. How we handle this is we're doing basically AV with software. When we have new features or new updates, we deliver that as a software. So what we're going to show you today with conferencing will work if you have a Gen 3 box, which we just started selling a year ago. This is all we do is update the software on that box and you'll be able to do um, what we're going to show you today. So here's kind of that overview. Um, and once again, I'm not sure of all these slides because once again, we just usually go in and demonstrate this. And I will say this, and I'll just interject it. If you like what we're doing, reach out to your data box rep. We'd love to come out and show it to you. Also, during this time, if you're at home, like a lot of us are, um, we'd be willing to send you a pod to your house um, on data box behalf for you to test and play with this stuff. But here's the big thing. You know, everyone talks about the one touch to join. Um, all you're going to do in our box is type in a four-digit code to authenticate yourself, and it's going to launch whatever the codec you have on your laptop. And when I say codec, I mean soft codec, Zoom, BlueJeans, WebEx, Teams, Skype, Videxio, Polycom, you, you name the list, the alphabet soup of video as a service. But that means for if you guys are out there managing rooms, you're usually having, if it's a Zoom room or a, let's say it's an HP Slice or it's a Teams room, whatever it is, you're having to manage that device. You're having to manage the licensing on it. You're having to manage it, update it, all that other stuff. For us, we're not going to use that. We're going to bring your own meeting, which is your laptop, which is your content, your device, everything you touch every day, and then wirelessly connect it to that camera through the pod. I think I've got, so, you know, one step to start, we don't care what the copper technology is. We don't care what kind of camera it is. As long as it's USB 3, or actually USB 2 works too. Um, and we plug in the back and it has the ability to work. Um, you know, once again, PowerPoints are not my favorite, so I apologize, but this is the way we do it now. Um, easy to use. Let's see if I can, so we do part, you know, we do have partners we're working with. Um, one of our long-term goals uh, we're working on now is when you plug that camera into the back of the pod, we'll also be able to manage the firmware. Uh, now that's a long-term goal, um, but it is coming because then that's how you'll manage the firmware on these devices. Udly, Aver, Logitech, Yamaha, Vadio, um, that we support all those cameras natively out of the box because we're just passing that USB back to the device, the laptop that's going to be the host of the meeting. Um, this is a representation of what, if, if on our pod we have the ability to show the, the calendar. So here's the calendar of the room. There's a Zoom meeting, there's a Teams meeting, and there's a WebEx meeting. Once again, for you to come in, all you do is connect to the pod, put the code in for your meeting. It's going to launch for the Megan Dumas's meeting. It's going to automatically launch Zoom, connect your camera, and you're in the meeting. But here's the other nice thing about what we're doing, and I think this is key. Once I connect to the meeting, and I'm now in it, and I'm using the room um, pod, I'm using the room camera that's on top of the display where it was mounted. Um, and let's say somebody else comes in the room. How do we have that person join in today's current world? They've got to join that meeting themselves, Zoom, Teams. I've got to send them the link, whatever it is. So we're double, triple joining, everyone mute their mic, all this stuff. We're saying that's silly. If I'm the host of the meeting and I've, I've launched it on my laptop, let's say Phil or Jack or John Lake come in and they, I want them to share content, they're going to connect to the pod. That means anybody else who comes to join this meeting isn't leaving the building on the internet and coming back. They're not tying up a bunch of licensing. They're not doing anything except for sharing content with the pod like they would at any other normal meeting. 
um, but it's going out of the host laptop. So the pod becomes the content channel. Let me see if I can find that. Here's the schematic. You can find like PowerPoint proficiency might have gone up just a little bit. But in this workflow, if you, if you see it, which is kind of a lot of lines, but any of those devices in the bottom of that image are wirelessly sharing to the pod. But on the right, you'll see the meeting host, which is, let's say in this example, my laptop. I'm wirelessly talking to the pod. The pod is sending back the content that's being sent to the farm through my laptop. But anybody else who comes in the room just connects to the pod. Pull my phone out, connect to the pod. Pull my iPad out, connect to the pod. Pull my laptop out, connect to the pod. Anybody on the far end is now seeing that, what we're seeing in the room, but they're not having to join WebEx, Teams, once again, that alphabet soup. For us, this is pretty revolutionary why we won Best of Show at ISC. Some of the differences, once again, we're pure wireless, you know, we're, kid, we're kind of kidding around in the office with a new marketing campaign called Too Hot to Handle, or technology is so hot that we don't have to handle it. But, we didn't design it to be wire, you know, touchless. You know, our, our tagline is a world without wires. Um, so we didn't build this just because of what's happening now, but it just happens to come into play where nobody wants to touch anything anymore, and we, we adhere to that standard. Once again, the analysis, we, we can use um, Zoom, Teams, and WebEx. And what's coming is you heard me talk about analytics. Um, we're now going to be able to catch, capture analog data, which means Traditionally, we captured data if people digitally connect to the pod. Now we're going to be able to catch, the camera will be able to tell if participants in the room, kind of like, like an occupancy sensor. But let's say I went to a room with Jack and we were going over some drawings and I didn't connect digitally to share content. But the system's still going to catch up that two people were in the room for 40 minutes. So we're getting more and more analytics to help people get things done. Um, you know, we're flexible, affordable. Um, upgradable, which I think is a big thing. It's not a rip and replace is one thing we drive towards. Um, let's see. So I think that's kind of it around this. So I, I bored you guys to tears. Um, let me get rid, stop sharing. I think I'm back. Um, but I'll hand this over to Phil. But once again, I challenge you guys that are listening. If you want to see one of these, Reach out to your data box rep. We'd love to get one in your hands to play with. But what we're going to do now is have Phil show this. So once again, I'll set it up. We're going to we're in a WebEx, and we're going to try to cascade this into another video call to make it work. Um, so we'll uh, we'll either all hail in success um, to make it work. So hopefully this works. So Phil, I'm going to hand it over to you. I think. All right. Phil, you there? Hey everybody. Um, so what I wanted to do here is go through and show this. Um, so I'm going to share my screen here real quick. Um, so what you're seeing on the screen is what we call our splash screen. So obviously in the lower right hand corner, you do have the calendar for the room. Um, everything that you're seeing on here, uh, you do have the ability to customize. So the instructions on how to connect to the display are on the top right, calendar, lower right, and then the background images can rotate through. Uh, and again, these are fully customizable. But, you know, going back to John's presentation uh, with the calendar, you'll notice that each of the calendar meetings has either Zoom or Microsoft Teams or uh, WebEx or something else. Now, in order to make this work, uh, we are parsing the information from the meeting room invites. So that tells the Solstice client, and the new version is coming out in late June, uh, is what our target date for this product release is or this feature release. Um, so that's when that's coming out. Um, so I'm going to switch over to my PC so that you can kind of see the workflow here. So on the PC, the way this works is that the Solstice client will now reside in the system toolbar. So that next meeting room or the next meeting, the video conference will show up with a label. It will actually show, you know, what video conferencing client you're going to be using. So all I'm going to have to do when I come into the room is just type in the screen key, which is the 2173. Um, so once I type in 2173, uh, there's going to be a couple of things happening here. And you're going to see a lot of flickering taking place. And, Keep in mind that this is beta right now, but what's going on is the laptop is negotiating with the pod and it's 
also setting up an extended desktop client, and it will also launch whatever you see client that you may be wanting to use. So now that you can see that it's in the call, um, when I go down here, there's a, uh, there's a Logitech camera that's now connected wirelessly to the pod. And now that that's showing, once the light comes in place here, you'll see that it's actually showing the camera and the microphone as well. So the video over that cascade, it looks great on my laptop, but the pixelization is actually due to uh, the content channel on the WebEx. Um, but, you know, this is in beta right now. Uh, we will be releasing this uh, come uh, the June timeframe. And then uh, if you want to try it now, we're happy to go on site and anything like that. So that is as far as what the demo is. Um, as far as the video conferencing client and um, I'll give that back over to John. Well, and let's just talk about what he did, because I mean, it's, it doesn't look as impressive because the way we're having to do this. But he, he connected to the pod like he would for any other meeting, typed in four digits. It automatically launched his client, which for that was Zoom, connected the call, and all he had to do was unmute his video wirelessly. So if you guys are familiar with USB, USB extenders, all that other stuff, a lot of them don't even work. So what we're saying is, why not just do it wirelessly? So once again, I don't have to touch anything. I don't have to do anything. We're completely agnostic. Um, and it just, the, the problem with this is it just doesn't present well, but we're, you know, Databox is going to send out a link to a video and I encourage you guys to watch it because it's going to show what that connection looks like, but it can also show what it's like for other participants who come in and want to share it to the meeting. They're not going to have to, um, that, you know, if they didn't have the client, let's say it was blue jeans, all they do is connect to the pod. So we're trying to make it seamless and easy uh, and make meetings productive, but also add value, like the analytics piece and all these other things, uh, which are us, we're just building out this ecosystem um, to make it easy. So just to kind of recap, um, and once again, we appreciate one's time during this. I think it was carved out for an hour, but we, you know, we're close to wrapping this thing up. Um, but we're not just an HDMI cable replacement. You know, when we hear wireless content, everyone thinks of just, let's get rid of the cable, which we do really well. 4K video, 1680p videos, all that stuff. Oh, by the way, we're also digital signage, centralized management. We didn't even talk about um, emergency messaging. Um, all the other things that we do that make us different, the analytics, you know, we become the platform across all the organizations we talked about we work. Um, if you're familiar with what they are, which is shared office space, um, there's nobody to set up their meetings to tear them down. You, you would not believe the BYOD devices that come in there from Linux to Chromebook to Windows 7 to, you know, first generation iPads. And there's not an IT help desk there to help people connect and disconnect. There's nobody there to set up a meeting and tear it down. So for us, that's one of the biggest challenges is how to make them successful in their meetings. And like I said, they've got 11,000 of us of our pods deployed because it's easy to use. And we use that as a testament because it, it's like going well, how it used to be when you went to the health club. You gave your card, you walked in, you did whatever you wanted to. It's the same thing there. There's nobody there to tell you how to do things or teach you how to use it. It's just got to be easy. Um, so hopefully you guys will send us some questions. So far, I don't think there are any. Uh, which either means we're doing a really good job or we put you guys to sleep, um, hopefully the latter. Jack, did you want to say something here? Yeah, I, I just want to talk a little bit about why this is the new normal. And just as an example, so everybody understands, um, over the last 60 days, uh, probably 75 days now, Zoom went from 10 million calls a day to 200 million calls a day. So people are very used to uh video conferencing as a tool for work i uh i come uh, my my work history takes me back to the days of tamburg where we were um pretty much all video conferencing and in going back to 2006 it seemed like every year we talked about how the next year is going to be the acceptance of video conferencing and how it'll be a part of our normal workflow well it really never happened 
this coronavirus pandemic kind of forced everybody's hand and people that really never used video conferencing, never really got involved with it, were forced to use it and have discovered this whole new, uh, they have a new view of capabilities and they're gonna wanna take that new capability that they got used to working with at home back to the office. And so uh, we feel that the immersive pod and added into your, your, your standard uh, conferencing setup will uh, enable those folks to work more effectively and efficiently. Like John mentioned earlier, uh, there's a, a, a phenomenon called the double join when you have three, four people sitting in a conference room and everybody has uh, content they wanna share. Everybody today has to dial into that call. You're using up a call license, whether it's Zoom, WebEx, go to meeting, whatever it is, you're using up a license. Every person uses a license. All of that content is going out to the internet, going out to the your provider servers, then coming back and going to the far end. Um, when you inject immersive pod in the middle of that uh, system uh, configuration now, you eliminate the double join, the quadruple join, the triple join. It's one person joining a call. So you 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 gain efficiencies uh, and economies by not having to have as many licenses. And it becomes a whole lot easier. John mentioned this earlier the time it takes for someone to, uh, when you're in a sitting in a conference uh, room and uh, John didn't know I was gonna ask him to uh, present on this call. And I say, hey, John, can you throw up that information? And he doesn't even have the meeting invite. We've just wasted about five, six, seven minutes trying to get him the uh, email with the link, get him logged in and all of that stuff so he can present on the call. With immersive pod in the middle, um, it eliminates all that. And you're just sharing to the pod like you normally would. Uh, but this is a new normal. This is something we've got to get used to. And uh, the immersive pod is going to help people who are not used to using uh, clients and traditionally haven't used soft codecs uh, ease into that process. And again, it makes it a whole lot easier for the workplace. And the one thing I can't, can't overstate uh, enough is the fact, and John mentioned it, both Johns, John Layton and uh, John Chandler mentioned this, is you don't have to touch anything. There, uh, like he said, there's no cable, there's no button, there's all there is is your device that you touch. And in this uh, day of, of trying to remain germ-free and uh, limit the amount of uh, social distance uh, contact we have, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a big deal. And, and we've had customers uh, come to us and say, look, we want to implement this just because of the fact that you don't have to touch anything. So that, that's a, that's a bigger deal than you think. Uh, and I just, I just wanted to add that. No, and Jack, I appreciate that. And I just, and I'll add one other layer to this, which means is we talk about transition. And I think most companies and most people are, are afraid of transition or change, right? We see it all the time. Like I, that was how, who moved my cheese? I like this the way it was. Um, we as an organization, take that pretty seriously and what i mean that in that regard is if you partner with us through databox not only are you going to get the power of databox behind it you're going to get the, the team that you're kind of hopefully looking at here which means that we're going to work with your project management team within databox on the install dates when, when that happens phil or someone's going to show up on site and help make sure that they're set up correctly all these things and and, and help you in this transition but then once they're installed and, and Databox has hand, you know, signed off on the rooms and you've got possession, we're going to show up on day two, depending on the schedule, and stay on site, depending on how big the deployment is, and, and ask for a conference room. And what are we going to do with that conference room? We're going to ask you to send an email out to the organization saying, when you have 10 minutes over the next day or half day or two days, depending on how many big conference rooms or how many employees you have, take your device, once again, your personal device, their laptop, their whatever, whatever they used to present with, and go down to the conference room we've reserved, and we're going to sit down with them and show them how to connect and disconnect and have a successful meeting. We're going to spend that time. We have a white glove team that flies all over the country and helps for large deployments, for you know medium size and smaller ones. We'll do it ourselves, which is is a a big deal for us because we're going to help. You know, most IT organizations will have the bandwidth to help mitigate the change or go out and train people. There's usually a placard on the table. Here's how you connect, or here's how you have a meeting, et cetera we're going to help you make that transition. Most companies, when they deploy, they don't even need it because it's so easy to do, but we're there just in case. And, you know, we don't want to be 
your vendor, we want to be your partner. We take that very seriously. So once again, you know, we, we make a great product, you know, we, we grew, we, we, you know, we're growing leaps and bounds in our space. We're in 39 of the fortune 50, um, because it works, it's secure. It talks to multiple networks. And with this new conferencing pieces, as Jack alluded to, you know, Jack and I come from a heavy video conferencing background. The joke was always video is going to take off one day. Um, but I think as Jack had said that this new change in workspace about how to communicate effectively without being in front of the person. I, th I think video is gonna, it's finally reached that point where it's not only just a nice to have, it's a need to have. And we're going to have the ability to, as Jack said, it's easy to manage from a laptop because I can, it's through image management, all these other things. I don't have to manage devices in the room. I don't have to touch anything. So, but it, once again, it, hypothetically, it's hard to kind of show this workflow in a WebEx. So we're going to give Databox a video a link to send out to everybody. Hopefully you guys watch it. It will probably generate more questions. And please send those back to your Databox sales rep so we can answer it. And, and if you guys are interested in what we're doing, so one thing this comes out, it's just a software update to our pods. It comes out um, probably late June. And uh, and the current pods can be updated to that. So once again, thanks to the power of Databox, Jessica and John, you guys have been great hosts for us. We appreciate it. Um, and I'll hand it back over to John. All right, I appreciate that, John. Um, so again, thank you to the Mercer team for sharing uh, capabilities of product and the future of what's coming with it. Um, we did have one question I wanted to address verbally. Um, I know we answered it in writing, but question came about what is the cost to set up a conference room? So the MSRP on the immersive units um, for the four connection unit is $1,199 and for the um, unlimited it's $1,399. Um, that includes a one-year subscription uh, to Solstice Cloud. Uh, Multi-year subscriptions are available. Um, that cover warranty and um, additional features. So um, that kind of sets a price there. Bear in mind, though, when you put this unit in, right, you may need to update additional components in the conference room. We're fully capable of assisting you with all your needs in the conference room. Um, and one of the nice things that, um, you know, is, as we return to work, um, which we did this week in our office, we started bringing staff back in at a limited capacity. Um, we've employed a lot of technology to help ensure that our workforce uh, remains safe when they're in the office um, from thermal cameras that scan for temperature as people walk in um, to uh, people counting so we know how many people we have in the building at any one time and that allows us to manage our capacity and uh, proactively notify those that need to be notified if, we're, uh, if we exceed what we, our targeted capacity is. Um, so there's a lot of technology that we're deploying, but this unit here, you know, one of my thoughts is, is as people get back to work, as, as Jack had mentioned, right, video finally took off. Everybody was kind of forced into it um, faster than I think people intended, uh, whether, and, and whether your platform of choice ended up being Zoom or WebEx or Teams or Skype um, or any of the other uh, solutions that are out there, this solution really can update your conference room and allow you to your teams to continue to use that technology easily. Um, it was probably a challenge for IT groups to initially support and get these uh, video platforms up to support the remote workforce that we were all forced into. Um, and you don't want to lose that capability and return to the office. Otherwise, we're going to hear from our employees that, um, well, it was easier working from home. I liked the video. I, I got used to it. So how do you equip a conference room to be able to continue to do that? This is uh, one way that you can easily get that going. So um, we look forward to that. Um, and I'll put out a call for any other questions. Please submit them in the Q&A um, if you've got any at this point. I, I did want to ask um, John, I've got a question about um, the five network uh, connectivity. You mentioned on the physical network connection. Yep. You can support up to three VLAN configuration on that connection. Um, how, how long has that capability been around? Was that new with just Gen 3, or is that a recent software update that enabled that capability on the Gen 3 pod? Great question. So it was a software update done, and Phil had told me the exact date, but it came out, I think, end of 2019, Phil. Is that accurate? And it was just uh, a... Yeah, it was in the 4.3 release, which I think was March, or actually it was either February, early February this year. 
Okay, so the dates were off, but basically it was just a feature. So we had the two physical connections, John, and we added the VLAN layers in through a software update. So, so for those of you that are on, just keep that in mind, a simple software update, and now all of a sudden I can support my users on GuestNet, on my internal network, and, uh, you know, even a third network. And then, of course, you could always have activate the internal wireless access point um, or connect that way. So there's a myriad of ways to connect on this unit, which is really flexible from a deployment model. Um, and the security white papers are available, too, because obviously network security will always have questions when you start doing that. Security is a big thing. MRSA does a great job dealing with security, and we're happy to provide any additional information your security team might want to see um, about John, how that uh, function works. So. Yeah, one more thing, John, just so next week we come up with a new release. So let's, I'll just give you the two highlights of that because I'm probably sure everyone started hearing me talk. Inside the box, there's a Bluetooth beacon. We're turning it on. So what does that mean in, in IT worlds who don't, for companies who don't let Bonjour run across their network because of security protocols? The Bluetooth radio is now going to be turned on in the pod. So it's been in there just dormant with this update. We're going to turn it on, which means that like a like an Apple TV, well, it's not like kind of like an Apple TV, your iOS device is going to shake hands with a pod. It's going to create, it's going to map those IP addresses and then automatically connect over the network. So we're not going to stream Beam over Bluetooth because of, of its latency and some of the other things, but it's going to be able to create that um, connection which for us is a pretty powerful thing. So once again, we're adding a new feature. But the other thing is we're going to add, which is a refactored Miracast ability, which will be Miracast over infrastructure. Um, and if anybody's ever used Miracast, they know that the protocol is not always the best video streaming that can be pixelated. It's just still a consumer protocol. We've worked really hard. We worked a lot with the team in Redmond from Microsoft, et cetera, to make this Enterprise grade, which means that now Miracast is over the network. So once again, it's not, you know, I don't have to connect locally to the display or I don't have to connect locally to the device. It's over the network, but it's also pin protected. So that's coming out on Wednesday, Phil. Am I right? Uh, yeah, it's Wednesday or Thursday next week, the 14th. So the that, comes, that comes out. So just, you know, always in it. So, you know, and I should have said something, we only make one thing. Right, we make one little thing, um, and if we're not doing a good enough job, or we're not outflanking our competitors, or we're not listening to our customers, because a lot of things we're talking about are being driven by the enterprise. We have a, cons we have a customer council of, of 50 companies, ranging from Chick-fil-A to Capital One to Amazon, Nike, all those guys. They basically sit in a room for two days and tell us what their problems are, and our goal is to solve them. And we do it through software by just delivering it through the pod. So. I won't drone on about that. And Phil, did I miss, miss anything or messing up on what we talked about in the new release? No, you know, I think the thing to point out there, and, and John Layton kind of alluded to it as well, is the fact that as we come out with new features, you know, as long as the pod's under subscription, you get that feature. Um, so we're not going to charge for the new additions that we're making over the next weeks. Uh, and if you buy pods now, it's covered for at least a year. So you get the conferencing aspect with it as well. So. Um, you know, it, it's just great to keep your software subscription current because you get everything that our other customers think of that we put into the product. So um, we're organic by our own customers, you know. So, so John, you didn't even know that was coming out, did you? Oh, a little bird may have told me. Okay. All right. Um, but I did want to say one on other this thing, call. though, <laughs> for users. That, that you kind of hinted on, but I'm not sure we made it clear. You know, the, in the wireless presentation space, there are really, and correct me if I say anything wrong, gentlemen, there are really are three main technologies that probably everybody knows about, right? Miracast, which is what you just talked about, John, AirPlay, Apple's platform, and then Chromecast, the other one that everybody hears about. Immersive Unit supports all three of those. Well, Chrome, we do browser sharing, so I don't know the specifics between Chromecast and browser sharing, but if somebody has a Chromebook, let's say K12, we support that through browser sharing, which is through the back end through like WebRTC. So we Miracast, AirPlay, and then browser sharing. Phil, I don't know what the difference is between Chromecast and I'll let you. 
No, I, I think the the Chrome browser or the WebRTC is yeah, the way that, they're addressing. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I meant to say phone. through Chrome. So, yeah. a, an Android device, or as you said, a Chromebook in a in an educational environment, is supported. It's easy to share. So, yeah. you get all the technologies. Five years ago, when we were doing conference rooms, we had to have a device to support this. You'd had to have an Apple TV to do AirPlay. You'd have to have, and so you were constantly switching between wireless, and it wasn't as easy for someone just to walk in with whatever device they had and share. Uh, their content, whether that's an Android device, an Apple device, an iPad, a, a laptop, a MacBook, doesn't matter now. Mark right. Our goal is to not tell you how to do it. You get to do it the way that you want to. So where our job is to not change your workflow, it's just to enhance it. Absolutely. So. so. Okay. Um, well, gentlemen, again, thank you very much for the time today. Uh, those that joined us, thank you very much for uh, attending. Um, again, if you have any questions um, or would like additional or you'd like a demo unit, please reach out with your, to your Databox account manager. We'd, we'd love to discuss further and assist you in any way we can. So thank you, everybody. Jess, is there anything you want to add as we close this one out? Thank you, John. Yes, I just also want to thank everybody today for joining um, the webinar. Just a quick reminder, the recording link for today's session will be emailed to all attendees 24 to 48 hours post-event. And if you did enjoy today's session and would like to hear more, we do offer new webinars weekly. Please check our Databox website for more information on upcoming sessions. And as always, we would love to hear your feedback on our events. Once this webinar has ended, you will be redirected to a survey page. If you could please take a moment to complete the survey before closing out your browser, we would greatly appreciate it. I believe that concludes our session for today. Thank you again to John, Phil, and Jack from Mercev for a great presentation. And thank you all for joining us. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.